Hey Daniel, let's build just some quick tips and tricks for working with hyphenation, which when you have these really long words and like these ingredients here with all these chemicals, it can be a real challenge um, when it comes to, first of all, hyphenation. So let's start looking at the paragraph panel here. When you're in a text box with the text tool, of course, you'll have access to the paragraph panel here. And you can see it's currently set to justify with last aligned left. And then here on the paragraph panel menu is where you have access to hyphenation. And, you know, number one, of course, hyphenation needs to be on. And then words longer than, you know, X number of letters. You might decrease that if words are not hyphenating. And then typically you have two letters before um, and after. So um, I'd leave that as is. Consecutive hyphens, this is kind of a discretionary thing here. Uh, typically, three is considered to be um, a good best practice, and then the hyphenation zone itself uh, is adjustable here. First, I'm going to turn on Preview, and then um, notice as I move this to better spacing, uh, you can see it starts to bring up words. Now, if a word isn't hyphenating, you know, the dictionary may not contain these words. In fact, I'm sure it doesn't for most of these words that you see here. So you might have to insert a what's known as a discretionary hyphen by using keyboard sequence command option shift hyphen, I believe it is, would uh, put a discretionary hyphen. Now you won't actually see that character unless it's um, a candidate to be hyphenated. So you might play with these values here. The hyphenation zone here, you might actually decrease this as well um, to try to get words to come up. And of course, make sure hyphenate capitalized words is on it there in caps as you see here. So hopefully that, you know, is one potential solution to a tricky problem. Uh, again, back here in the paragraph panel, there is this other option here. This is kind of a big thing. Uh, single line versus every line composer. Uh, it just thinks a little deeper when you do the every line composer. It just kind of does some difficult uh, try tables. And, and, you know, again, it's a difficult, challenging thing. Like with this word here, like, you know, you're probably going to have to click between like methyl, I presume it's a candidate to hyphenate, and do command, option, shift, and a hyphen. Again, you won't even see that character. Even if you turn on under type show hidden characters, uh, you won't actually see that uh, unless that becomes a candidate to hyphenate. And, you know, in a worst case scenario, you might have to um, adjust the uh, letter spacing on even perhaps a per character basis. Uh, here in the character menu, I'll sometimes switch it from the kerning from auto to optical. That way it looks at the shapes of the letters, uh, like a cap LT, for example, might kern tighter. And then you might further adjust the tracking, you know, either increase or decrease it. And that gives you, you know, if you have everything selected, um, of course you do all that. But if it's just like one word that won't hyphenate the way you want, or you want to go on a per line basis, uh, you might actually use uh, like shift return is a forced line break. I just pressed and held the shift key and then the uh, return key on the keyboard. This is the secret symbol for a forced line break. So if it's not working the way you want. You might actually go in there and like, maybe I don't want this to hyphenate, shift return that. Um, so you can fix one thing and break another. You might wind up, you know, if there's only a dozen lines or so, you might actually go on a line for line basis and even adjust things like, uh, you can cheat, you know, with the, uh, I would use, you know, kerning, increase that perhaps before I'd um, actually try to like do things like, you can kind of cheat with condensing the font a little bit horizontally maybe. Um, these are kind of last resort things where you actually kind of like distort the text. Uh, I wouldn't go to too much, you know, uh, adjustments there, maybe like 95 or so would be the most before people start to notice it. And of course, the typeface itself, the wider the typeface, the more challenging it's going to be to, hide, to, to, fix, to fit it. So uh, you can fix that by using a true condensed typeface, you know, instead of regular use condensed. Uh, that decreases legibility, however. So, of course, the true test as we discovered is you have to be able to read it like in the shower. <laughs> this, you know, give it the shower test, I guess. So those are just, you know, some tips and tricks. Hopefully that helps. Uh, again, sometimes just changing the width of the overall uh, box, the text box itself, by sometimes a half a point uh, is enough to get it to, to fit, just kind of fudge it a bit. Um, but just be careful that you don't make the text illegible. 
is the main thing. So hopefully this helps. If not, let me know if there's anything else I can do. Thanks. And one other thing I meant to mention here on the paragraph panel panel menu here, there's this justification dialog box. Again, always activate preview so you can try it before you buy. You can click in these fields, tap the down arrow keys on your keyboard to just kind of uh, eventually, if you hit the right numbers, you'll see there's uh, the minimum word spacing being adjusted there. And you might change the target, uh, either increase or decrease that until things start to break the way you want. want. Um, so, and then the letter spacing, of course, you can see that's taking control over whatever letter spacing it is. And um, so you can change your target values here, perhaps. Uh, again, the previous dialog box in the paragraph panel for hyphenation, I like that scrubby slider. It's obviously a lot easier to work with these values. If you happen to have a single word that you're trying to fit, you know, ideally it'd be flush left, but you know, it may try to force justify that. But you really should hyphenate, of course. And as far as InDesign is concerned, it does have a considerably better type engine. It's a little more modern. Uh, but it's basically the same technology here in Illustrator. And I wouldn't complicate the workflow unnecessarily by having to, you know, export, import, you know, to and from Illustrator. So um, I, hopefully you'll be able to, with these tips and tricks, uh, find a solution. Uh, but again, you're, you're really challenged by having to get uh, these uh, chemical names uh, properly hyphenated. So discretionary hyphens are probably the best strategy there. And uh, maybe even on a per line basis with letter spacing is probably what it's going to come down to. Hope that helps. Thanks. Bye.